All right. Welcome, guys, to another episode of The Daily Bread. Today, listen, listen, I got the fabulous multi-talented second time comer onto the show shavita herself my girl my friend <laughs> I'll make sure I'll clap over here in post production i'm so happy to be back it's been How like doing? when was the last time we did this it was 2020 Whoa. yeah 2020 because we had looked at the season well not season finale but we were talking about season four and that was 2020. we've been waiting listen here we are now sad as ever having to record this because now it's the last time well i mean it doesn't have to be but it will be the last time in terms of new content when it comes to insecure because insecure is now over we were given five beautiful seasons and i don't know girl i don't let, let's just let me start with asking you like what has insecure meant to you as a person as a woman as a person of color as a person in the industry like what has insecure meant for you girl yeah that's a loaded question but it's right. i think as a woman, it has so many layers of uh, understanding of friendships and relationships, but also like being awkward and weird and being witty are qualities that we don't really see in female characters um, in a lot of shows that are very popular. And um, if they do, like the cure is always like hooking them up with somebody. And I think with Insecure, it showed us the different levels of relationships and friendships that you have, that you don't have to have everything together. And the journey, the journey um, it takes. And, and it's always like, yeah, you know, when you were 16, I'm sure like a lot of people had this idea that by 25, they'd have a house, a husband, they'd be, yeah. So it's like all of those things that kind of, play in your mind as a woman and I think Insecure for me showed me that it was okay to not be okay. Um, Precisely. Not to have it all together. So, and that there is a hope. There is a hope. <laughs> and and uh, that, sorry, just to add to what you were saying, not even that there is hope, there is hope, but it's also about just doing what makes you happy. Like it doesn't have to make sense to anybody else but you like your friends can say whatever obviously your friends and family can give you advice but at the end of the day they're not you and you are the one who's in charge of your happiness who's in charge of your destiny and you just gotta do what's right for you it's funny you saying all of that but we were judging Molly hard because she <laughs> she avoided she avoided everything that we like people were telling her you know she was go we'll get to that but, but she wasn't doing things that would make her happy and by the end of the season i felt like she finally just let go of i think societal ideas and she just i think by the end just became relaxed and wasn't yeah. so like the thing is like her her happiness was through obtainable goals it wasn't that she really had this feeling the sensation and i think mm -hmm. it was you that was saying you know you will feel love your quote stuck with me you will feel love and i think that's what she is you know she hasn't really experienced besides with her parents and um on a romantic scale she always had this idea of they need to be these values in order for me to accept them or these and, uh, yes so with all her flaws it's nice to see that she is still this beautiful amazing character and a really admirable woman so despite all of <laughs> our shouting at the screens yeah no we were big big mad big mad at her but we we still gonna get into all of that yeah. um just to piggyback off of my own question because you know i ask questions that i know i'm gonna answer myself but I think for me, 
insecure is just so beautiful in its i think i think authenticity is such an overused word but truly it was authentic like i don't know what else to call it it was yeah. authentic it was true to the real life experience and i think i've said it in one of the previous episodes which you should you guys should definitely watch is this idea that you know even when i went to you know when i went to la like la is not fully what tv or hollywood portrays it to be there's some parts that are just chill normal mm. every day it is what it is and that's what i experienced and so seeing la through the eyes of the way insecure did it it was just like yeah that's what i know authentic know. life to be for yeah. most of us like in not all of us are going to be like up there or rich or whatever like this is it and you can still achieve your dreams in a way that's attainable to your surroundings if that's what you want and yeah. then also just seeing black people fully on screen like all sizes all ranges all you know heights and complexions and it was yeah. fantastic to see and the thing is it was excellent like it wasn't just oh you know that's good for a black show no it was actually excellent the writing was excellent the the humor was brilliant and so just seeing a show that fully wholly had a mainly black cast both in front of the scenes and behind the scenes was just so inspiring to watch and yeah i applaud the entire yeah everybody they did no, the damn it was a huge it was a huge cultural shift i mean it seems strange to say that because we are not american but we are part to a lot of americanized um culture in yeah. south africa so it's like um i grew up with girlfriends and living single living single was one of my favorite shows yeah. and i think when i watched the first season of insecure it gave me that kind of um those kinds of vibes and the feel because of the friendships and uh that all intensity that you spoke of is something that we've never really seen on screen in movies um mm. besides like with I, don't, I can't even <laughs> I can't even give you references because there's like very few in Babuji but um I think also as female filmmakers it's inspiring to see and I've said it before I've said it in our vision because it's like each episode has a moment um you know with Molly and her mom that was a very different episode compared to the one where Lawrence is going through his um turmoil with his with his son and uh I think the that was hugely different from an episode with um with Isa and her date night with Nathan like it wasn't really a date night but it was just that vibing um i quite enjoyed that because it showed like <laughs> the thing that brought them together in the first place was it was just natural it was just like they gravitated towards each other because of their conversation and that that freedom and all uh, for both of them i think it was very important that they found people that spoke to that freedom um mm. so for me that's why i like that episode but overall season 5 um i would say the the lawrence issues yeah no i agree i agree episode 3 i couldn't breathe girl as i was watching that episode i couldn't breathe because i'm like first of all where are my people and are they watching this at the same time as me and we going need to we i remember a friend of mine literally she's in america and the time zones were crazy but she was like i will wait for you to finish this episode so we can <laughs> you know so i think episode 3 like they turned up to a whole yeah. new level I, it was it's like the most memorable was that montage was very memorable oh. like Ooh. when you asked that question that was the first thing that came to mind was that montage and that's For me it was the montage and then that scene on the on the plane. Yeah. He's going turbulence like yeah. I'm just like yeah. Yeah. Guys, no. Insecure took us through the absolute most. So for me yeah. I think episode 3 for me was my favorite episode yeah. is like because it also it showed is. vulnerability that absolutely has not actually been displayed in its entirety. That vulnerability exactly. of being a new dad 
and being a new mom um, and the contrast of that. Yeah. It was beautiful. And everybody had a legitimate side. You know, it was difficult to pick sides, although we forever will be team Lawrence. Ain't nobody going to tell us nothing. Uh, this is the finale. <laughs> so, yeah, for me, but in terms of the entirety of Insecure, I have like certain, for me, I have three episodes that are my absolute favorite. So the, ep- the season finale of season two, the episode with the marathon, and then they have 30 day perspectives of everybody's life. I love that episode. I loved it because again, it, at the end, that scene where Lawrence and Issa are just talking it out and then they squash the beef, just, just, you know, then my f- second, well, other favorite episode was the one where Lawrence and Issa went on a date. Listen to me. Listen to me. Visually, <gasps> visually speaking, the, the red, the red bars. Oh, yes, and the- yes. So, listen, that episode. Oh my gosh, that I think that might be my favorite. And then the episode three. But overall, man, this was just man. I'm so sad it's over, but it's it's ugh ugh. I this is officially now my second favorite series of all time. Like. The office, nothing will ever beat the office. That will just, people will just have to deal. But yeah, the office and then now Insecure. Those are the two that go into the books of Dimpo's favorite series ever, 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 ever. But anyway, another question is, what do you think about how they wrapped up the series? Are you happy? Are you unhappy? I feel like they gave us what we wanted. Like the Team Lawrence, Team Lawrence people, we got what we wanted. That was <laughs> that. Besides Issa and um, Lawrence, I think they set it up in a way that you cared for the characters, for every single one of them. Mm-hmm. And even though Issa is not with Nathan, everybody knew that he deserved better. He deserved somebody that was as crazy about him. Hundred <laughs> percent. And this is why it wouldn't have been justice if Issa and Lawrence, sorry, Issa and Nathan stayed together. Nathan needs somebody who's gonna keep his energy. Nathan was all in. He was, you know what I mean. And it would, it would have been an injustice if Issa yeah. stayed with Nathan. And the most surprising thing, even though we like judge Molly so hard, is I was so happy to see her getting married. And the guy, oh. like, I think the, the episodes before that, um, you know, when they, as ex- explosive as that party was, um, the moments between Torian and Molly were so genuine. And I I just, like, really felt good that for once. And she- also, it was, it was believable. Like, up to yeah. this point, and that's my thing. Guys, one thing about love, one thing about love, it's, I wouldn't say easy, but there's a flow, man. It just goes. There's chemistry. It doesn't. Why? Why are we fighting? Like, why everything? Why should everything be an issue? And that's why, for me, it was so believable with Torian and um, Molly is that there was such an ease, such a flow. There was nothing difficult about what they did, you know. And as much as you know, with Issa and Lawrence, they did have those like roadblocks and certain things at the end of the day nothing would beat Issa and um lawrence's chemistry yeah like and you see how they grow they grew apart but they like grew as in the a bit of a freezing over there but you said you said that they grew apart then they grew individually they grew individually um sorry i'm just forgetting my point (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's fine. Yes. So they grew on their own individually and it just prevented them from making the same mistakes in their relationship. So that, you know, is that is something I, I feel like everybody needs to learn is that, it, you know, when you're in this relationship and you're expecting somebody to change for you, that's not, it's not <laughs> you're not accepting, you're, you're not really understanding that. They don't need to change from you. You need to accept or move on. And that's what the the whole issue was like in first season and second season is that 
Lawrence and Issa were very different people from what they are in season one. Wow. Yay! The amount of growth, and that's what I loved about sort of like every single character is that we saw growth in everybody. There wasn't a single person, I would say. I mean, the thing is, I think like maybe with Tiffany, I think Tiffany anyway was beyond her years, whatever. She just seemed like she was wise anyway, you know. And I think even her, her journey of being a mother, it's made her grow as well to sort of like appreciate herself and her role as an individual rather than being a wife or being a mother and stuff like that. I think she appreciated more the idea of being an individual. But other than that, like, I think they wrapped it up beautifully. And I don't think they they did it for the sake of, you know, to make the audience happy. I think they part of it was that, but I think naturally that's exactly what I would believe having watched or five seasons and nine episodes, naturally I believe that that's what the characters were meant for. And that's how it is. And that, you know, you can make your own happy ending. That's what I loved about it is that you have a choice in making your own happy ending and doing things at the end of the day that makes you happy because truly you can mess your life up. And that's what we saw. Season one, season two, season three, season four, continuous decisions that all the characters made to mess their lives up but at the end they all were just like you know what we grown now there's no more excuses for you know just messing up willy nilly we're gonna choose what makes us happy and i love that love this yeah girl so my final question is what are your final thoughts and concluding thoughts about insecure and all of that. How are we closing off? How are we feeling now that it's ended? Hard question. Like, what are the lessons learned? What did I think about? Um, easily, insecure is just refreshing. It's just so refreshing to see visually, narratively. It's just, um, I would say it's it's sparked a very personal journey for me and it's very hard to say that a lot of series can do that to to somebody um but it it talks about the human condition very naturally that you don't think oh i'm just watching the series it's like soapies and whatever it has lessons it has growth it has friendship the understanding the love and all of those things that we kind of question because we're kind of thrown into being adults <laughs> all of a sudden with all of yeah. these complicated things. And I feel like Insecure cap, uh, you know, encapsulated all of those themes very well, that it is a very personal thing, very inspiring. And uh, overall, this series is definitely one of my favorites. And it's like one of those that after a couple of years, when you watch it, you'll learn something else and you'll pick up uh, new interesting ways because I certainly um, when I watch season one now it's not the same as when I watched season one when it first came out and that already tells me like um, it will mean something different at each mm -hmm. phase of my life <laughs> and then yeah there's longevity in yeah. the series because and I love it, it. those parts of, of a woman's journey um, mm -hmm. from friendship from just like being broken, figuring it out to <laughs> having kids or not having kids. So um, I think it's, I'm so grateful that this mm. has happened, that this is in our generation, that we've got to experience something like this. Absolutely. And I think, yeah, I'll, I'll watch it again 10 years from now and see if I understand Mali a little bit better. I doubt it, but, you know, I'll see it. But for me, I think, um, <laughs> for me, I think outside of like what the show is and what it's meant, it's so inspirational to see just black, black people killing it and seeing someone's vision blow up in this way. You know what I mean? Like, I think Insecure has set a precedent for, you know, at least our generation moving forward and how are we going to navigate 
the, you know, the film industry and navigate the TV industry and how we write our stories and um, hopefully the stories being aired on your HBOs, your Hulus, your, you know, your Netflixes. Um, but it's just so inspirational. And one thing that, you know, Issa has always said that I've loved and you literally see is that, you know, go after your dreams of the people next to you. Yes. You don't have to always reach and say, oh, I need to work with this person and I need to work. She didn't do that. I mean, the people that she worked with are people that were next to her. We didn't know Lawrence before this. We didn't know Kelly before this. We didn't know. There was people that um, were Exactly. And so that's also inspiring that, oh, you know, we can just grab the people that we know who are next to us we don't have to and we just build with them and build that trust and and for me the second thing is that you know it's so inspiring also to see the way in which they worked behind the scenes um with with compassion with love with care because that's important like sometimes you share stories of just horrible sets and horrible people and th that's not at all what i got from insecure how emotional they all were at the end, you know, uh, because that just shows you how much love, care, um, kindness that they had on set. And for me, I think it's such a, like a gold standard moving forward and, you know, bringing up people without an agenda, you know, like, for example, you know, Issa showed couples that were in the lgbtqia plus community without an agenda it was just like it is what it is you know it's just that i'm not doing this for the sake of you know i want to represent or no that's how it is it's normal it's it's how we are and i love i love that i love that doing work without an agenda of oh i need to cap i need to you know for I don't know what it's called for for PCness, I guess. Yes. To be I think that's that's another point that I have to add is um what I love about Insecure and about Isare is that there was no explanation of um this is us, you know? You didn't mm -hmm. have to have like some kind of understanding or foreground or you're just in the scene this is what it is and that's it if you know you know but it's no cutting down and containing in order to be palatable for viewers that not necessarily people that are from the location but just like you don't have to box yourself in order to present this idealized version for hbo or whatever that's hbo is also like one of the best one of the best because they don't they don't do that they don't cut down oh, yeah. hbo that, is about is they don't have, yeah they don't have a lot of shows but it's yeah. quality what they have it's like we mean serious business so yeah i just yeah i probably will always pay homage yeah, to <laughs> <laughs> i'll probably yeah i was saying i'll probably pay homage to insecure for the rest of my life yeah. like in this show because it's really it's been a not just a cultural shift but it's been a, like a, a cultural phenomenon and i'm just so glad that i was part of the audience and part of seeing such beautiful storytelling and yo i was i was in shambles by the end i was like oh my gosh i can't believe this and i'm just so happy with the way you know that it ended and I wish them nothing but all the, all the people who are there nothing we should have recorded our phone call immediately after we watched it we were just like we should have let them know like how emotional we were on that day like oh it was beautiful but I, anyway it should not be, yes else after i watched that episode i was just <laughs> there's a meme I'll, I'll show you the picture of that meme you know the lady sitting with her sunglasses yes! on her yeah. on the bed so it's like yes that was me literally, <laughs> literally so yeah anyway thank you so so much for joining me to chat about all things insecure my beautiful viewers let us know how you felt about insecure did it end well did it not are we team lawrence are we not 
and i will see you guys in the next episode bye